Okay, parallel and perpendicular lines. I'm breaking this out on its own video because this is something that always pops up on SAT at least once. So even if it's been a couple of years since you had Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 or wherever they covered this stuff, welcome back to lines you thought you'd left them behind. And if you're seeing this for the first time, remember this because in two years you're going to have to come back and check it out before the SAT. All right, so how does it work? Parallel lines are these ones where it goes in the same direction, n never crosses like railroad rails. And then perpendicular is a slightly trickier one. That's the one where they're 90 degrees to each other. So no matter which orientation they're in, as long as they're at a 90 degree angle or a right angle, they're perpendicular lines. And you, your teacher might even call them normal lines because for some reason normal means 90 degrees for some mathematic types. But uh, here we go. So the trick is that parallel lines have identical slopes so two in front of the x's. Now remember, the number in front of the x is only the slope of the line if there's a one in front of the y. So, but because both these have sort of an imaginary one in front of them, that means the slopes of each is two. And they have different y intercepts. If, it, if they had both been minus three or seven, then they'd have the same intercept, same slope. They'd be the same line, right? But since these have di different intercepts, they're going to cross the y-axis at different spots, but going in the exact same direction. So that means they're just offset a little bit but they'll never cross. Perpendicular slopes are the ones that are trickier to remember, but it's called negative reciprocal slopes. So in this case, these two lines are in fact perpendicular because if you took the negative reciprocal of negative one fifth, you start by making it negative, so that makes it positive, and then you have to flip the fraction. So that's gonna go to five over one, which is five, which is the slope of this other line. Now going the other way can be a little bit trickier you know, somebody might say, hey, what's the reciprocal of 3? It's not a fraction, so how can you flip it? Well, every whole number is actually a fraction over 1. So if you want to flip it, that just becomes 1 third. And then, of course, you've got to have the negative in front of it. So 3 and negative 1 third would be perpendicular slopes. These are a couple of trick questions I want to throw at you just to show you a common mistake that kids make. Um, the first thing kids forget is the negative sign. So they'll think, hey, one half and two are reciprocals, and therefore they're perpendicular lines. But they're not, because they're not negatives. It'd have to be negative one half and two. And you can see that if you ever want to graph these things. A slope of one half, positive one half, is up to the right, but it's a fraction, so it's kind of a gradual increase. And then positive two, still going up to the right, but faster, it's more like this. But either way, you can see that these are pretty close. Definitely not 90 degrees got to have a negative sign. You know, if one's going up to the right, the other one's got to go up to the left in order for them to have a right angle. If they're both going up to the right or down to the right, then there's no way they're perpendicular. Similar thing happens on this one. If we rearrange it, we'll get, um, we've got to add, subtract 2x from both sides, so we'll get negative 3y. Because remember the slope, standard form that these lines are in, totally meaningless. We've got to rearrange it to have y by itself. So negative 2x plus 2 for the top one, so divide everything by negative 3, and we'll get y equals 2 thirds, because the negative 2 and negative 3, the signs cancel, and we get 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds. So that's one line. And then the other one, we're going to subtract 2x, so we get 3y equals negative 2x plus 1. Divide everything by 3, you get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1 third. Intercept doesn't really matter. What we're looking at is the slopes. So now that we're in slope intercept form, the slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. So, but this one is positive two-thirds, and that came from the fact that they had different signs to begin with. But positive two-thirds and negative two-thirds, just because they're negatives, does not make them perpendicular. And if you graph these two lines, what you would get is that two-thirds, positive two-thirds is kind of a gradual up to the right, and negative two-thirds is the same gradual only to the down to the right, and these are not perpendicular. So got to be reciprocals. What would be the perpendicular to two-thirds? Negative three-halves, because if you flip it and negate it, that's the perpendicular slope to two-thirds. All right, let's um, do the slightly more complicated type of problem. Now, in all those point slope and other, and other videos that you looked at, we figured out how to find the equation of a line through a point, either with a given slope or maybe they gave us two points. So this type of problem is very similar, only instead of flat out giving you the slope of the line, they're going to tell you they want the line perpendicular or parallel to the line they're giving you. So the first thing we'll want to do is just figure out, hey, what was the slope of the original? 
So if the original is negative 2, and then this is a parallel situation, which means we want the same slope. So our slope is also going to equal negative 2. And we have a point, 2 comma 6. So at this point, we can do it one of two ways. I'll demonstrate them both. One is we'll just point, plug into the point slope form, which is what I always do, which is m times x minus x1. So I just plug in y minus the y coordinate I've got, which is 6, equals negative 2 times x minus the x coordinate of a point I've got. And that is point slope form. We could just multiply this out and rearrange it if we want a standard form or something. The other way to go is y equals mx plus b form. So we'd have to plug in, first step is plug in negative 2 for m. We still have b, which means now we need to solve for b by plugging in our points. So we're going to plug in 2 comma 6. So we'll get 6 equals negative 2 times x, which is 2, plus b. So this is negative 4 plus b equals 6. And hopefully you can tell my b's apart from my 6's. Add 4 to both sides, and we get 10 equals b. So now we're going to take this and plug it into here. So we get y equals negative 2x plus 10. All right, either way, we should get the same thing. Whichever way you prefer is great. But I would encourage you to consider point-slope form for situations where you've got a point and a slope. It's a very well-named form, if you ask me. All right, this one's pretty much the same problem, only this time we're doing perpendicular. So the slope of the original problem here is negative 1. So what does that mean the slope of our line is going to be? That's going to be the negative reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of 1? Just 1. And then you negate it, so it makes it positive 1. So our slope is going to be positive 1. It turns out the positive 1 and negative 1 are negative reciprocals. So y minus 6 equals 1 times x minus 2 in point slope form. Of course, 1 times all this stuff. I'll just distribute that out. y minus 6 equals x minus 2. Add 6 to both sides, we get y equals x plus 4. Pretty fun. Now, if you wanted to double check your work, you could plot both of these. This first equation had a y-intercept of 1, and then a slope of negative 1, which is up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. So, boom. as I mentioned in my graphing lines video, though, I'd encourage you to just plug in points instead of trying to do that up and over thing. And then a slope of positive 1 is another one I know. So a slope intercept of 4. And positive 1 is 45 degrees up and to the right. So you can see these are, in fact, looking pretty perpendicular. So I'm pretty happy with the answer we got. It looks like we got it right. All right, final two problems will be slightly trickier because the original problem is a little bit weird. What is the slope of this problem? Now, when I tutor kids in person, this is what always happens. If we get a weird line, like where the one of the letters is missing, the question is, uh-oh, I can't figure out the slope because there's no x. You know, because if, if the way you always do these is you figure out the slope based on whatever number happens to be in front of the x that x is multiplied by, then if there's no x, you're like, uh-oh, can't find a slope. Well, whenever one of the letters is missing, that should be your tip-off that, hey, this must be one of those special lines, either horizontal or vertical. So which one is it? The way I remember this is that because y equals 1 has a y in it and y is vertical, so I'm thinking it must be a vertical line. But I also know that I'm always wrong about that, so therefore it's horizontal. So sure enough, y equals 1 is a horizontal line. It's a line where every single point along the line, because remember a, point, a line is just a collection of infinity points all right next to each other. Every one of those is going to have a coordinate of something comma 1. So that's why y equals 1 is the coordinate.